Well, obviously, it was a, uh, a good win for us and um, probably the most complete game that we've played as a team uh, since Tech uh, and, and much more explosive than that. Um, offense was very good. One of those days where everything worked. Um, special teams was good. Our, our coverage units um, continue to get a little better. Um, so it's, it's nice to see the improvement in those areas. We've um, talked to our players a number of times about trying to get a little bit better every day in those areas that we were poor at two or three weeks ago. So we have to con continue to work hard and improve in those, uh, in those situations. Uh, and then defense was excellent. I thought that uh, as good as the offense was, I thought the defense was even better in the first half. Um, I don't think, I think they, had, they don't have any, they didn't have any points at halftime. Um, is that right? Yeah, and so that's, that's excellent by our guys. Uh, and we forced turnovers, so I was really proud of them. And essentially to hold them to 14 points for the most part. Um, they, uh, they wanted to stay in the game, and they, they get a le little bit upset at the head coach for taking guys out. But um, it's important at that point that everybody needs to play. Guys that have worked extremely hard and um, are loyal to our football program need to be in the game. The young guys need to be out there. They need to get reps. They need to play. So uh, I told them I was proud of the way they competed and uh, what they stood for in this game. So um, it's a good one to enjoy for the rest of the day and um, get back to work tomorrow. I think they had a really good plan. I think uh, Coach Young and the defensive staff um, had a really good plan. They got caught off guard early. They were uh, putting trips in the boundary and throwing that ball out there. And those receivers they have are very physical. And we weren't uh, running through the uh, blocks as well as we should have. But once we kind of got that under control, I think the key to them having success was they had a really good game plan. Our players have done a nice job of focusing and preparing during the week, which is so important at this level because um, distractions can play a key part in these young men's lives of not getting prepared for Saturday. And their preparation was really good. I watched it through the week, and I thought, golly, these guys are practicing good. We got a good game plan, and, and uh, hopefully we can execute, which we did. Talk about a couple of weeks ago, Caleb Martinez had a big day running and throwing against him. Griffin really had, I mean, didn't make any big plays. We had 267 passing, but he never really got after him. I think our, uh, our coaches did a good job of um, showing the defense the mistakes that were made in that game and explaining to them why that happened. And I think our players bought into that. Um, and they did a good job. He's, he's a good player. As everybody knows, he had, uh, well, he had 15 yards. And then um, he probably had over 100 on those last two drives, I would bet, throwing. So they really, really played well against him. And I think the key was is just showing our players the mistakes that were made in that game and then how to correct them. Can you comment on Brandon breaking that passing record? Well, I'm happy for everything that uh, anybody on our team achieves individually. Um, our team commitment is by far the most important, but you're going to have individual um, statistics and awards that come along with that when your team's hat doing well. And so I'm happy for him. Um, we, uh, you know, the pass was there more today than the run. Uh, we rushed for um, 290, but um, in the running game, it was more, it was more, we had a big reverse, so you're a little over 200 in the rushing department, but it was more pass by the way that they were trying to defend us. What did you want to accomplish defensively to shut down Griffin? Well, yes, you have to start with him, but you also have to defend him throwing the ball over the top. Uh, I had mentioned this in the press conference earlier in the week, and in their last few weeks, they had had big numbers on, on a few plays, and I'm going to be off here a few, so don't quote me on this, but they had three for about 161 at Texas, and then they had 59 for 155, three big plays. And so we felt like that we needed to defend the ball thrown over the top more so than we had in the past. They were a pretty hot team coming in. Were you nervous about this game? Well, I'm nervous about every game. I, I just get nervous about every game. But, um, I mean, I think hot's kind of put – they were smoking hot coming in here. Um, played as well as they have in how many years down there. Um, I think Coach Bryles has done a great job and the, their players were believing and 
I didn't see it, but somebody said that uh, they had a quote from you know some of their players saying they were the team to beat in this league, and uh, so they were they were they felt really good about themselves, justifiably so. And there's nothing wrong with confidence. Um, so, not any more than any other game, Bill. Um, I, I have a, uh, a lot of confidence in Bill Young and um, Dana and um, Joda Forrest, and I believe in our team and I believe in our young players that are playing above their head right now. Did it seem, if it looked easy, did it look easy from your vantage point? Everybody was involved, it seemed like. Uh... It was one of those days, John, where everything worked. So obviously there was a good plan and the players bought in and things just worked. And sometimes that happens. And when that happens, it's usually a pretty good day. Well, I, I didn't want him to break my record. <laughs> and uh, honestly, uh, that's a really tough decision. And here's why, because um, you don't want to ever try to humiliate any team. We don't do that here. We take knees. We do everything we can when we've been in situations like that to not just run the score up. In fact, at the end of the game, Chelf was um, going through a read progression, and, it, and his read told him to throw a pass. And it was my fault because I should have. I told him, even if your read tells you to throw a pass, we're going to run the ball. And that was my fault, and I didn't realize it too late. And I apologized to Coach Bryles after the game for that. It wasn't his fault. It was my fault for not telling him before he went out there. And so much of what we do is based on leverage, run pass. He was just doing what he was coached to do. Um, so um, they made us aware of that he needed a few yards and asked me if it was OK. And um, I, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, and so they said, just give us one play. And I said, that's fine. And then you know, I wanted to get everybody off the field. So we've not really um, set ourselves up for that ever. But they asked me, and, and I said it was OK. Do you feel like Mike Martin's uh, on pace to like set himself up for what could be an extraordinary season? Now, the way you've handled your business, what can we do? The, you know, the only thing we can do, Bill, and coaches talk is worry about the next one with it. But, that we're not good enough to look past anybody. We're vulnerable in certain areas, and we got to have guys that make plays. And we're just not good enough to say that we can look for an incredible season. The only thing we can look forward to is tomorrow night's practice to get ready for Texas. You were asked about a month or a month and a half ago how good of a team you are really to the non-conference and things like that. And you said, ask me in three or four or five weeks after you go through some of these tests. Now that you've seen how your team responded, winning without Brian on K-State, winning a game like this, in such a big way. How good is the team? Well, they're obviously better than people thought preseason. Um, and, and if you guys remember back when we were in uh, Dallas, it was a, Dallas was a media day, is that right? In Dallas, that there was a lot of talk about um, how I felt about people thinking that um, we would win three or four games. And uh, I said, the good news is we get to play them all. And so we get to find out. And so it was easy for me to say, we'll see. Um, I felt like our team was pretty good, but I didn't have any evidence to prove it with. I had a new quarterback, four new linemen, so new guys on defense. So there's no room for us to say that we were better than what people thought we were. But um, we're, we're a pretty good football team right now uh, because the players are buying in, the coaches are doing a great job of coaching them, and um, they just have to continue to move forward. But they have to earn everything they get. We're not good enough to not earn everything we get. And what I mean by that is if they don't practice well this week, then they'll be vulnerable. And uh, college football is that way. And as long as they continue to buy in what we're trying to accomplish, they'll be fine. Mike, is one of the challenges to continue that? Like you said, they focus well. They got prepared this week. It's a challenge every week. Yeah, anybody that listens to what people tell them and that they think they're a pretty good player, uh, they set themselves up for not being so happy next Saturday night. That's just the way it is. Um, the, all the publicity and the notoriety and th that's coming for, um, to them right now, individually and as a team, um, is well deserved because of what they've done up to this point. But if you really start listening to it and you think that you're as good as people tell you you are, you'll get you, you'll be very vulnerable in the next game. It's good to have Blackman back. Thought he handled himself well. 
Um, you know, he kind of put me in a corner, you know. I uh, rolled the dice on a fourth down call, and we set him up, and he dropped it on us. But uh, it was good to have him out there. Justin was uh, extremely embarrassed last week. I noticed him on the walk today, and uh, he spent the entire 500 yards of that walk over there um, touching all the hands of the, the little kids and the Oklahoma State people. And he has not done that before, and I noticed that, and that's because he felt really bad for what happened. And uh, we put it behind us, and the only thing he can do now is, is continue to contribute to this team and this university and do the right thing, and that's what he did this week, and that's why he played well. You open up the second half with that reverse. Is that a way to kind of tell your guys, you know, you're up big, just get on straight breath? Well, it's a nice call. Um, we, uh, you know, we have a, a lot of misdirection in our offense, which I think uh, benefits us greatly. And um, we had made some adjustments at halftime, and obviously they're going to come up with six, eight, ten plays that they really feel like that can work based on what happened in the first half, and that happened to be one of them. So, good? All right, thanks. thanks.